Something Arabic about him. Uh, Eastern Jew. Father born in Syria, emigrated to Egypt in 1916. Son brought up and educated there. Fluent in Arabic, speaks five other languages. Thrown out of Egypt two and a half years ago. A modest job here. Accounts department, supermarket chain. Modest income, modest flat. Married? Yes, here. Nadja. Last year, seemed pretty religious. She's a nurse about to give up her job because she's pregnant. Seemed very happy. Modest hobbies, modest way of life. You make him sound so dull. Think he's gone soft now? Eh, he's got so many assets, it's worth finding out. Eddie Cohen, my name is Avram. Can we talk? What about? Nothing nasty, I assure you. I think you could find it to your advantage. Look, it's your lunchtime. Join me for a coffee or a drink. Mossad. So how's that to my advantage? To Israel's advantage, which is your advantage. We need your help. No, not anymore, not in that way. I've helped Israel enough. Thank you very much. Listen to me, please. You are not a man to make a scene in a public place. I'm just trying to offer you a very good job. My boss thinks you are a very special man. No, I'm an ordinary man. I've already got the job. As a pencil pusher? You? Listen, I'm an ordinary man in an ordinary job. I've got a wife, soon I'll have a family. I'm very happy, that's all I want to know. Maybe you should think about that family. You've got a very ordinary salary, too. We'd be offering twice what we earn we now. We manage fine on the money I make. You thank your boss for his interest, tell him he's got the wrong man. He doesn't think so. Yeah, well, he's made a mistake. He doesn't often do that. Now, listen to me. You've made your offer. Now I'm going. If I have to make a scene, I will. Take this card anyway. Consider my offer. Call that number if you change your mind. I won't. Come on, nice day. Stay and have a free lunch. Haven't you heard? No such thing as a free lunch. You have been found guilty of the murder of innocent Egyptian men, women, and children. I sentence you both to be hanged until you are dead. What's the matter? I'm sorry. Did I wake you? Are you all right? Just couldn't sleep. <laughs> Probably my cooking. What's the matter? What is it? I can't stop thinking about that report on the news tonight. The school bus blown up. What sort of monster could do such a thing? Oh, God, those poor parents. One day our child could be traveling on a bus like that. It makes you wonder, you know. Is it fair to bring a kid into all this? Uh, I mean, it's a terrible thing. It's not the reason to stop having children, huh? Something like that doesn't happen every day. It happens here all the time. Or something like it. It's war all the time. I can't remember anything else. If it's not Egypt, it's Jordan or Syria or the whole damn lot. You start thinking. 
Well, don't you? Isn't it selfish to bring it? Stop it. I get sick of talking about war all the time. And I know in a way that that's what you meant too, but listen to me. We're going to have this child. And we're going to love it. Any progress on Mr. Coin? Not yet. But give it time. Give it time. God, you gave me a shock. What are you doing at home? It's only two o'clock. I got fired. What? Fired. I got fired. Good afternoon, Cohen. Job hunting again? You did this to me, didn't you? I beg your pardon? You did this. You had me fired, didn't you? Mr. Cohen, don't make a scene. I don't want to hurt you. Didn't You've you? been hurt enough for one day. Didn't you? <laughs> Take a ride with me, Mr. Cohen. Why? I want you to meet someone about a job. You uh, need a job, don't you? You don't look like an intelligence agent, Cohen. Everything about you is wrong. Your manner, your style, your attitude, all wrong. This in itself makes you irresistible to the Mossad. <laughs> Look, I'm not a spy. I have no intention of becoming one. Come now, Cohen. You're too old to play the debutante. You know exactly why we want you. For a start, let's review your practical qualities. You have one very great gift. An exceptional memory. Well, we hear about these things. I'm an accountant. I only remember numbers. You only tried with numbers. Now we want to test your powers in other spheres. For the purpose of spying? For the purpose of observing. Subsequently relaying those observations to me. Observing who? And for what reason? Whoever I tell you to. I heard you people were insane. Up to now, I wasn't sure. What kind of fool do you think I am? Let's stop fencing about Cohen. I'm talking about Egypt, 1955. I was there too. Our military intelligence was very happy with the work you did for them. And you were smart enough to get out then. Now you've got a second chance. It's all in the past. Don't you miss the challenge of it? No. Of course. You're just an ordinary man trying to live a simple life. What's wrong with that? Nothing at all, except in your case, Cohen. We're treading deeper waters, aren't we? Aren't we, Mr. Cohen? Leave my life alone! Stay away from it! I'm afraid I can't do that. Your life was mine before you walked through that door. You'll receive one of these twice a month. No one pays that kind of money for observation. Take the check. Consider it a pre-employment bonus. 
Another will follow in two days. Your wife and friends will be told that you are now a government buyer. You work for the Purchasing Commission of the Ministry of Defense. All the checks will be signed by that commission. No, thank you. You knew I'd call, didn't you? Yes. If I work for you, it's only temporary. You won't have to sign anything. Now, you're sure you'll be all right? I'm a nurse. Well, I look after other people so I can look after myself. All right, but if there's any sort of problem... I'll call the doctor straight away. I'm not a fool. Okay. Anyway, you won't be gone for long. No, 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 no. A couple of weeks at the most. Right? No way to get out of it. We have a new training program. All new employees must take a course. Will you please stop going on as if you've got something to apologize for? I'm very happy you've got a job. <laughs> You're a pain in the neck when you mooch about. Anyway, come on. If you are buying for the Defense Department, you are guaranteed a job for life. Now on, you will lead two lives, husband and secret agent. You'll be trained in the methods of the Mossad. Infiltration, observation, communication, and how to survive. You will also be trained to become a Syrian. You will study their history, their customs, their laws, until all of these become part of you. Never forget, Syria is your ultimate target. The key to Syria will be through the Syrian community in Argentina. In order to be accepted by them, we will train you to become a Muslim, in body and mind, if not in soul. You are training to become Kamel Amin Tabit. You, Tabit, were born in Syria. When you were young, you and your family emigrated to Argentina. In the last few years, you've been touring the world doing business for your textile firm, but now, you're returning to Argentina. You want to put your wealth at the disposal of certain powerful Syrian officials there who belong to the illegal Syrian Ba'ath Party. You want to work for their eventual rise to power in Syria itself. Uh, have I made my fortune? Oh, yes. You're very successful. And we will provide the means for you to play this part. What amuses you? that we make you instantly wealthy. Yeah. There's a certain irony in that, huh? But also in the fact that I bet that the Syrians right now are taking just as much trouble to train somebody to spy on us. They cut off our fingers, we cut off theirs. As many as is necessary. What happens when we get to each other's throats? We reach the knife before they do. If we don't, the next generation will be standing up here describing the beauties of Tel Aviv to one another. Only they'll be doing it in Arabic.
You will tell your wife and friends that you're touring Europe and America buying arms. You will write letters and postcards before you go, and they will be posted for you at regular intervals. In fact, your first stop will be our safe house in Zurich, where you will become David. The first purpose of this trip is to become accepted by the Syrians in Buenos Aires, so that you may be accepted when we send you into Syria itself. The second purpose is to meet Khaled. Once again, remember this face. Colonel Jamal Khaled, a man to be feared and cultivated. In public, Syrian military attaché. In secret, a leader of the illegal Ba'ath Party. We believe that this party will one day overthrow the government. If and when it happens, you, Thabit, must be in the forefront. Excellent. Take a look at yourself. See how it feels. I still see Ali Cohen. That will change, believe me. Take off your ring. You grew to love Kamel, I mean, Tabit. Buenos Aires. From him or of him? Of him. I told him to make himself popular. What about object number two, getting in with Khaled? No sign of that. We knew that never would be easy. The Bath Party are a nervous crowd. They're banned, and they've got enemies. He knows Khaled's men are watching him. Gamal Khalid. I'm sorry to bring you out here, but privacy is never easily found. You look nervous. I am. You might have been nervous earlier if you'd known how closely I've had you watched. Do you want to know about the textile trade? I'm a representative of the Syrian government. That government doesn't care for the Ba'ath Party. You've been heard expressing sympathy for that party. I ought to make a report on you. But I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt because I don't believe that support is genuine. But why not? You are a businessman. The Ba'ath are socialists. The interests of the two are quite opposite. I'd need good proof you really believed otherwise. Where that came from. This is no proof. The check is made out to me. 
I'm sorry. I was wrong. Report me, please. Now, may I go? Not before you tell me what you really believe. I believe in the policies of the Ba'ath Party. I believe that only they can give Syria a new justice. I believe that only their strength can beat the Jews. But I wish to place my wealth at their disposal. I wish to return to Syria and work for their eventual rise to power. If it so happened that you were a leader of the Ba'ath, I would follow you as I follow Allah. Join me. The father. What a handsome father. Huh? She's got a very conceited father. <laughs> now, come on, I want to hear about Paris. Mm. What was Paris like? Paris. Mm. Paris, London, Stockholm, you've seen one city, you've seen them all, right? So, blase, huh? Anyway, I wanted to come home. Mm. Well, one of these trips, I want to come with you. I want to see a bit of the world, too. Mm -hmm. Promise? I'll try. You'd better try hard. How long are you staying? As long as I can. Oh, good. So we'll be able to paint Sophie's room. Absolutely. That's eh, Sophie? She says, mix the paint. <laughs> Syria is our most dangerous enemy. In a country in such political chaos, almost anything could happen. And almost anyone could come to power. It is vital we learn immediately. And in advance, if possible, who's rising, who's falling, and who is being purged? You must provide us with this information. Given your contacts in Buenos Aires, you may even be able to influence events. And any military information picked up on the way will, of course, be gratefully received. Galila will review the latest reports. Galila. The Ba'ath Party seems to us the only one that can take firm control. It's still officially banned, but Hassan, the leader, is very popular, and many of the army are known to support him. Your new friend, Khaled, could be the key. He's back in Syria now and is progressing steadily. Your transmitter. Your antenna. Fix one end to the transmitter, and the other thing fixed to anything metallic on the roof, pointed in the direction of Tel Aviv. I'm very proud of this. It's my own design. These are grenades, detonators. C-32 microphone bug. Tape recorder. And these. Cyanide. Seems to have come so suddenly. I know. You didn't even have time to paint off his room. <laughs> Next time. How long this time? Uh, it depends. Can't you give me a schedule of where you'll be? No, it's like the last time. Huh? Plans change all the time. Buying arms isn't easy. A lot of countries don't want to sell to us. 
and a door open suddenly, and I'm told to fly off, follow it up. Now, if you have any problems, you get in touch with Yakov, huh? He's very helpful. He'll do anything for you. Will you go to bed with me? It's not very funny. No, I'm sorry. Only I get so lonely sometimes. So do I. Do you? No buyer's inducements. No complimentary Swedish blondes. No. I took the job. We knew it involved. We thought it was worth it. What happens if we change our minds? What happens? Oh, I've got to go. Miss the plane. Miss the plane? Oh, God, it's too important. Listen, you better go to her, huh? Right, more. I'll try. Come back safely. I will. Oh, coming, darling, coming. You'll be contacted in Beirut by a man named Nassim. He'll get you into Syria. A title sheik, a brilliant businessman. He doesn't, of course, know that you're an Israeli. He thinks you're an agent of an exile group that wants to bring the extreme right wing to power. Don't make the mistake of trusting him. I think you will find everything you need. You could entertain a president here. Perhaps you will, who knows? Have a drink. In case you're wondering, the rent's been paid for a year. You've thought of every detail, haven't you? I do only what I'm told, Tabit. What our anonymous friends wanted is what they got. General Staff Headquarters. Everything that happens in this country starts or finishes there. This is insane. Goodbye. Must go. Ah. And good luck, Tabit. And to you. Thank you.
Mission commenced. How good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Please forgive the unfriendly guns. They're meant to bar other people than you. Yeah. Welcome to Syria. Thank you. And uh, congratulations, General. Thank you. Come into my home. I've told my wife all about you, and I have some special friends I want you to meet. Please. My dear, I want you to meet one of our most generous benefactors. Kamal Amin Tabit. Tabit, my wife. I'm honored to meet you, madam. Mr. Tabit, I'm delighted to meet you at last. You are a man of mystery. Ah, no mystery, madam. I'm a simple businessman. I buy and sell textiles and antiques cheaply for export. Now, let me introduce you to a neighbor of yours, Major Saloum Kamal Amin Tabit. Major, I'm very pleased to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Uh, a neighbor? Major Saloum is in charge of security at General Staff Headquarters. Ah, the Ba'ath party has friends in all the right places. Please. Hey, hey, not too much noise now. Leave them alone. They are enjoying themselves. You're too soft to them, Gamal. Very good, Walid. Very good. Rania, Do you have go. children of your own? No, oh, madame. Unfortunately, I have none. He's not even married. And he's handsome and he's wealthy. And you and your friends will spend hours and hours selecting the right girl for him. <laughs> Be careful, Tabit. That woman is an expert matchmaker. In the end, you'll have to surrender. But for the moment, let me snatch you from her clutches. There is someone I want you very much to meet. Tabit, it is with great pleasure that I introduce you to the founder and leader of the Ba'ath Party, Hafiz Hassan. Thank you. 
At 0300 hours, the four units will leave the provincial barracks. Journey time to general headquarters is 22 minutes. Major Saloon will be waiting for them there. At 0320, section B will be in position surrounding the telephone exchange. At the same time, section B... At dawn this morning led to fierce fighting in the center of the city. But by noon, the Ba'ath forces had taken over the major military and government centers. Following the government's defeat, General Jamal Khalid was appointed commander-in-chief of the army and the new minister of defense. I swear on my honor and in the name of Allah to keep safe our homeland, to sacrifice myself for the Syrian state. Such food with you? Mm -hmm. Oh, such women. This is a marvelous way to celebrate our rise to power. The food and the drink are superior. I don't know where you lay your hands on some of it. And I'm not going to ask. <laughs> what I'm going to ask is uh, that gorgeous girl you introduced me to. Mm -hmm. She seems to have taken to me. Mm -hmm. My wife is very religious, so I have to be, you know, discretion is the key word, of course. If there are any possibility that uh, if it came to it. Ah. Say no more. Say no more. I don't believe it. I'm sorry. I don't believe my husband's job is so important you can't make better arrangements. I haven't seen him for half a year now. I've seen him twice in the last two years. He can't be the only arms buyer you've got. In his particular line, he's become the best. Be honest with me, Yaakov. Are you keeping something back? What do you mean? Is he staying away deliberately? No. Not yet, no. Come, come. Look. I promise you, he loves you. You know he does. I know you tell me he does. And I also promise you that very soon, he'll be coming home.
I cannot express my gratitude enough, my friend. An afternoon I shall never forget. I am always at your service. And I at yours, if I can ever do a favor for you. Now, there is one thing. I need your advice. Business advice. Business advice. If I can, my dear fellow. Between you and I have been offered a deal by some Egyptians. Only it seems to me that it might not be the right time. I mean, if there were to be any trouble. Hold off a little. Why take risks? How are you? How are you? And how are you? Good evening. You are welcome. How are you? Ah. I'll tell you, General. I'm not yet convinced that Nasser isn't a Jew himself. These Egyptians will mate with anything from an Israeli to a jackal. <laughs> We will meet with Nasser. Yes, we will talk to him. But it will come to nothing. The Ba'ath has no intention of reforming the United Arab Republic, whatever Nasser may think. It will be a federation only on paper. We will break the pact when it suits us. But for the moment, it suits us to let our enemies believe that the new United Arab Republic is a reality. It buys us a little time. Of course, when the truth comes out, we can expect trouble from the pro-Nasser groups. Khalif told me, yes, sir, again, five minutes ago, same transmitter. Did you get any of it? Only enough to be sure it's caught. Any idea where the transmitter is? Too faint, sir. Could be anywhere in Damascus. Stopped now, anyway. Never on for long. Must be something we can perhaps when that new Russian equipment comes, yes, we can find yes, yes. You know, one can't help being curious about one's adversaries. I know everything about Khaled factually, but I don't know him like you do. But Ahmed likes Khaled. But Ellie Cohen still works to destroy him. Two different people, Tabet and I. Which do you prefer? <laughs> You've done well, Ellie. Better than I could have hoped. I think you are now in a position to undertake your most important mission. The scale on this map, 1 to 20,000. From the Golan Heights, our territory here is absolutely open to them. The Syrian guns can shell the kibbutzim down here any time they like. When I was in Buenos Aires, I had to stand and applaud when they announced the shelling of kibbutz Tel Yashur. Yes. 32 adults, seven children killed. Yes. The guns are well concealed. They're tunneled into the heights. We've never been able to pinpoint their exact location. We could bomb them for a whole month and still not hit them. These guns must be stopped. So we must know exactly where they are. But it wouldn't be easy to get there. This is the top security zone. Hmm? I mean, only the most trusted Men are allowed anywhere near here. Can you do it? Can you? I can try. Succeed, and you finish with Tabit. I can't cope with this, Ellie. 
I don't think I can. You go away for so long. I don't know what you're up to. I don't know where you are. We are supposed to be married. I mean, we are supposed to be. Now you're going again, and how long for? A year, two years? You don't know yourself. Do you even care? Yeah, of course I care. Are you telling me the truth? About what? Everything. Well, everything I can in our business, some of it has to be secret. Don't drift away from me, Ellie. Nadia, would I do that? Is everything under control? All in a day's work. Quite a fight. So no, I saw it from my window. I didn't know. Well, I wanted to see if you were all right. You're a good friend, Tobit, but politically naive. When there is a coup, a clever man waits till he knows who's won. And then he goes out and sides with the winner. Most of my so-called friends won't appear for at least an hour. I will have to pretend I believe their excuses. I'm not naive, my friend. Just practical. If you fall, I fall. this country. You're becoming a very important man. You haven't done so badly yourself in the last three years. You know, the trouble with power is once you've got it, you, you always have to look over your shoulder to see who's trying to stab you in the back. You are a man to be envied. Envied? Why? Well, look at you. You're still young, you're clever, you're wealthy. They tell me you are handsome. <laughs> There's not a girl in the city who's not after you. Ah. You are leading a lifestyle most men only dream about. And tell me who's trying to stab you in the back. 
I have business rivals. Come on, business rivals. Those sort of rivals don't carry real knives. But don't get too complacent, my friend. I may just have to shake you up. Oh. You do good work. You serve on the council. You provide us with funds. But I like you. I trust you. I may want you to move to higher things. Such as? I'll tell you when the moment comes. And there's one thing you did promise me. What's that? To ride behind you in the victory parade in Tel Aviv. I haven't forgotten that. Yes, but are we getting closer? Hmm? I hear rumors about the army. But they're not as strong as they could be, not as well equipped. Oh, believe me, Tabit, we are getting strong. You should see our guns on the Golan Heights. They terrify me, let alone the Jews. I would like to see them. Impossible. Impossible for any civilian. Impossible. Huh? <laughs> for any civilian except for you. I've heard they were major. Very impressive. Also invisible from the air. Mm, so I see. Most ingenious how you've disguised them. Most ingenious. placement do you wish to see today, sir? Sorry, Major. I'm here till tomorrow, and I'm here to see them all. Afraid they might get a bit boring for you, Tabit. To layman, one gun looks very much like another. I don't mind. All right. Sleep well? Very well. Fortified bunkers are not very comfortable places. Hmm. No, but an interesting experience. Yes. Amazing. Just go down there, and you'd be among the Jews. <laughs> Except, of course, we'd end up. <laughs> we'll be off in a minute, Tabit. Just a couple more places to see, and then that's it. Back home. <laughs> Make your deals and come back quick, my friend. I will. I 
embassy in a hurry. That, my friend, is the Al Fatah, the Palestinian commando. Hit and run against the Israeli kibbutzim. Your money helped to train them. Very soon you'll begin to see some return on your investment of it. I shall miss you. And I you. Allah be with you. And with you. Here. These coordinates must be exact. They are exact. Okay. Here. Yeah. One twenty two millimeter gun. Two one thirties on either side. There. Now, here. Three one twenty twos, twenty five men, four machine gun posts. About a mile above to the south, here, three more one twenty twos, two mortars. Right here, Zaura, held by a force of 200 men, with two infantry companies, six rocket launchers, 25 bazookas, 200, no, 60 machine guns, 25 of them heavy machine guns. Tel Kunil, here. The approach is heavily mined, and there's a path that they use for supplies running alongside these trees that's clear of mines. And supply depot. Reached by a narrow road right here. Uh, no heavy artillery, but usually defended by four to six men with machine guns. The uh, officer in charge has a limp and chain smokes. Small field artillery unit. Here. Four check recoilers cannons. There. Weaponry. Weaponry consists of 25 machine guns. Come on. down the northwest up here. Here, two mortars. Here, a second battery here. That's it. That's it. Got to go back. You've done well, Ellie. Better than we had any reason to expect. It's over. Go home. No, go home. After that, I've got to go back. And look at the position I've achieved over there. Huh? The knowledge that I'm in a position to get. You know I've got to go back. I know it's getting more dangerous all the time. I know sooner or later somebody's going to get on to you. Any day now, they'll bring in new equipment. Pinpoint your radio as soon as you transmit. Okay, so you can change locations. You can handle that. But you can't handle somebody recognizing your face. They've got people in Tel Aviv. What if somebody sees you and your wife walking in the streets? And what happens when we blast their guns to bits? You think they won't put their heads together and say, how did they know exactly where to bomb? You're a brilliant agent, Ellie. 
But your luck will run out. The terrorists. Alpha Tau. Now, you got my report that they're active again. I mean, you know what animals they are, what they can do to women and children. It's money I gave them that's helped set them up again. I've got to go back and monitor what they're up to with my contacts that I can find Coyne, out. You, you're not listening. Ah, to when me. I was in Egypt, I had to... I, I know all about Egypt. Your friends were tortured. They were hanged. They didn't give you away. If you felt you had to repay all that, what do you think you were doing in Syria? Are you saying that you don't need me there? I'm saying I think you've done enough from our point of view and from yours. Whatever your reasons, I'm saying go home, lead a normal life. But you're not saying that you don't need me there. I'm saying I don't think you should go. Lovely day, huh? <laughs> yeah. Was it very cold in Europe? You really want to know about the weather in Europe? Not if you don't want to tell me. You know, I don't think Sophie recognized me. Of course she did. You can't expect too much of them at that age. She was overtired. She'll always like that when hey. she's... Hey, come on, come on, come on. Watch it! Watch it. Huh? What are you playing at? Come on, they're only kids. Kids doesn't mean being stupid, huh? Sorry. You all right? Huh? Yeah. Don't you be sorry. It's not you. What's the matter? What's the matter? I don't think I should go away again. There'll be nothing left of us if I do. I don't want you to go. Or is it too late even now? Don't be silly. It's just been so long each time. You can't expect... Is it too late for you? Tell me the truth about it all. Learn to manage. You'll take care of the children? Of course. And yourself. Toast. 
my friend. To the bath. Oh. Oh. To El Fata. El Fata. Now they, they, old friend, are the true patriots of the country. Yeah. Then we must drink to them once more. Hmm? To the Alphata and their next mission. They, they told you about that. But I thought, eh, it doesn't matter, does it? Does it? Soon. Everyone will know. <laughs> Especially the Jews. That kibbutz, Tel Yashuv. Tonight, al -Fata. Tomorrow. <laughs> Here's to al -Fata. al -Fata. They leave any minute now. I must be at headquarters. Couple of hours. Follow the progress. <laughs> Till then, you're good. To El Fata. <laughs> El Fata. Come on. We can get him now. At what time? We are trying to get it now, sir. Code is very slow. He did say tonight. Have the army notified immediately. Well, tell me, Demi, where is he? Just across the street, sir. I'll be with you in a moment. Mission's been cut. It's the end for you, Tabit. And for you, Saloon. Get him out of here. I want this place ripped apart.
Way down there. I have to know everything about you. Who you really are. Who you work for. What your methods are. What information you sent out and who you sent it to. And the names of your compatriots in Syria. In the end, you will give us this information. I ask you first to give it freely. I have no information to give. Before they finished with you, you'll be screaming and pleading and begging to give it. I've trusted very few men as I trusted you. I gave my word for you. I put my life in your hands. And you stuck a knife in my back. If you had violated my family's honor in public, I'd feel less betrayed than I feel now. All right, you made a fool of me. I'm a proud man. That hurts my pride. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how much of a fool. That exciting news I heard for you I was going to propose it next council meeting. On my recommendation, it would have gone through. I was going to propose you be appointed Deputy Minister of Defense. Oh, yes. It has its funny side. Depending, I suppose, which side you are on. Can you imagine? The third most powerful man in Syria, a spy. Perhaps if you'd known about that last night, you wouldn't have taken the risk you did. You would have let one little kibbutz go to rot. But no, making a fool of me, that's not that's not the heart of it. And not the harm you've done me and the party. Oh, our opponents will love this. And I shall need to fight with my teeth to survive. No. The heart of it is, I took you as a friend. While all the time you were I have no pity for what will happen to you. Please, don't give up hope. We're trying everything we can. We're offering all the Syrian spies we've got in exchange for him. And if that's not possible, we're prepared to offer a million dollars, plus trucks, tractors, medical supplies. And of course, we'll bring all the international pressure we can to try and get them to accept. But there is hope. I'm sure there is. Why didn't somebody tell me? Why didn't I know? Why did you all lie? I knew it was something. I knew something was wrong.
Syrian radio has announced that Eli Cohen has been found guilty at the closed trial and is to be hanged in Damascus on the morning of May 18th. Pleas for clemency, including those of England, the United States, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Denmark, and the Vatican, have fallen on deaf ears as the Syrian remain adamant that they will not release him on any terms. Where in the name of God do I begin? I've come to tell you it's tomorrow. There's no alternative. The slightest sign of weakness, our party, our government will be finished. So that's an apology for hanging me. Did you apologize for the bombing of that cinema in Cairo? I'm hanging a spy. They were innocent women and children. What were they on the buses that you blew up in Israel? You know, I was wondering, suppose you decided to stop being a spy, but carried on living a stabbit. Could you have come to think of yourself as an Arab? I'm a Jew. An Eastern Jew, inferior in Israel, only one step from being an Arab. I'm a Jew. I'm just trying to underline the stupidity of it. You and I, same stock, same language, same love of the desert, fighting to death over a little piece of land. It's my home. And it's my brother's home. The fight goes on. Is there anything you need? I would like to write a letter to my wife. I'll be provided with the materials. Anything else? I would like to see a rabbi. I'll see to it. friends. Yes, we were. May your God give you peace. Eli Cohen. Rabbi, you'll see that my wife gets this.
Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. My dearest Nadia, I know you will always look after our children and be in close contact with our family. But I urge you to get married again so that our children may have a father. Do not waste your time weeping and mourning for what has passed. Always look forward to the future. My last loving thoughts are for you, our children, and all my family. I beg you to forgive me and to pray for my soul. Peace be with you.